5 Foods That Naturally Lower Cortisol Levels and Reduce Stress Until a few years ago, my relationship with food was not very healthy. I ate, yes, but not so much as a moment of sharing, joy, or nourishment, but rather as a system to combat stress. If I had a heavy day at work, if I felt under pressure, or even worse, to avoid feeling and perceiving negative emotions like loneliness, sadness, or disappointment, I would throw myself into food to hide, to crush these difficult emotions and not feel them in any way. And that's how I found myself facing abundant meals, eating and stuffing myself as much as possible, just to reach that feeling of fullness, almost to the point of feeling sick, and being able to lie down in a sort of coma on the couch. At the moment, it's true, abusing food, choosing the wrong foods, can give you that feeling of well-being that makes you forget all the unpleasant moments, but without a doubt, this type of approach is not one that will make you feel better in the future, but will make you feel worse. Before continuing, dear viewers, if you appreciate the content of this video and are satisfied with it, we invite you to consider the option of subscribing to our channel or supporting us with a donation. Your support is essential for the growth and constant improvement of our channel, and it will allow us to continue producing high-quality content for you. You can do it here below, through the appropriate buttons, subscribe, and thanks. Since I learned that the food I eat has an impact on my stress and emotions, I understood that certain changes could truly bring enormous benefits. In this video, we will see together which foods can help combat stress and negative emotions. We all have them, but often many of us have the habit of hiding them, running away, avoiding, and perceiving them as much as possible precisely because they are negative and therefore to be avoided at all costs. One of the systems that perhaps you also use is that of hiding these emotions precisely through food. And that's why, despite knowing what is good or bad, we have gone to the dietitian, the nutritionist, who gave us a complete sheet of yes foods and no foods, yet we still end up falling into the same bad habits, bad habits that we have learned to avoid negative emotions, to hide them, to repress them as soon as possible. The first step for a change, however, is not to change food or follow a diet, but to start by accepting that life is made up of negative moments and letting these moments, these emotions, emerge and have space in our lives. If you feel lonely, sad, angry, or disappointed, don't try to run away from this emotion, don't think it's necessarily a negative emotion. If you let it out, if you understand it, it will be positive to have understood it. Therefore, the first step for a lifestyle and dietary habit change is not so much related to the diet, but to the acceptance that life also has negative feelings and that we are not perfect, but we can learn to understand them and let them emerge. Having done this necessary step, you can then learn to choose the right foods, the virtuous foods that little by little will lead you into a spiral of benefit upwards, into a trajectory in which you will feel better and better, always more in harmony with yourself. And what are these foods? The first food I want to talk to you about is foods rich in omega-3. Why omega-3? Because today in the common western diet, there is a huge imbalance between omega-3 and omega-6. Omega-6s are pro-inflammatory and need to be counterbalanced by omega-3s. It is thought that the modern diet has an imbalance of 26 to 1, that is, 26 times more omega-6 than omega-3. Why? Many times you add refined oil to recipes or prepackaged products, and you don't even know it's harming you. Seed oils, vegetable oils are very rich in omega-6, and if you look at almost all the ingredients of commercial products, you will notice that oil, if not the first, is probably the second most present ingredient. They add it as a substitute for sugar to give flavor. They tell you, look, this product is great because it's sugar-free, but they fill it with vegetable oil full of omega-6, which will do nothing but inflame you even more. Eliminate as many of these industrial products as possible and add oil everywhere in your recipes, especially if it's not an extra virgin organic olive oil, cold pressed. If you want to add your dose of omega-3, flax seeds are the perfect food for you, to eat at least one tablespoon a day, crushed and perfect for reaching that threshold of healthy fatty acids you need. The second type of food that can help you combat stress is foods rich in magnesium. Because in fact, when we are stressed or do a lot of physical activity, it is precisely magnesium that suffers a deficiency and can become depleted. Where do we find magnesium? Mainly in plant-based foods. The richest are dried fruits and also seeds like pumpkin seeds, but in any type of plant, vegetable, or fruit, you will find this essential food that participates in more than 500 chemical reactions within your organism. Let's specify it clearly. You don't need supplements, neither magnesium nor omega-3, because it is only through the diet that you assimilate nutrients, 
but also fibers and all the components that then allow you to assimilate all the substances in an optimal way. Breaking them down and adding them through supplements is obviously necessary if you have a serious deficiency, and therefore your doctor or nutritionist will advise you to do so, but don't think that the supplement will be enough to make up for your deficiencies. If you have a deficient diet, choose the diet change because with that you never go wrong, and you will have a long, healthy, and happy life. The third type of food that will help you against stress, anxiety, and lowering cortisol levels are foods that have a low glycemic impact. This is one of the mistakes we fall into, precisely what I was talking about at the beginning of the video, when we eat a high glycemic food, we have a reaction of 1-2 hours of calm, tranquility, fullness, that sensation in which you lie down on the couch with a full stomach and think you have solved all your anxieties, all your worries, your fears, because you have been stunned by this sugar overload that lasts 1 or 2 hours, but then brings you down, down straight into the abyss, because the sugar load is then quickly eliminated by your organism and then leads to a subsequent depressive effect. Changes in blood sugar are in fact directly related to changes in hormonal oscillations and mood. If you find yourself in a happy moment and 10 minutes later super depressed, with very sudden mood swings, perhaps your diet is having an influence on your character, and it is better that you start choosing low glycemic foods such as fruit, vegetables, whole grains, legumes rather than refined foods such as white bread, white pasta, or sweets and snacks that we know are very bad. The fourth type of food you need to eat if you want to lower cortisol and stress levels in your organism are foods that nourish your microbiota, probiotic and prebiotic foods. What are they? What does probiotic and prebiotic mean? Foods that nourish the microorganisms inside your colon. These foods are rich in fiber because it is only fiber that manages to pass through the stomach to the small intestine and then reach the large intestine where there are the microorganisms that will then give you, as a reward, hormones, substances that make you feel calmer and lower stress levels. Fermented foods like red cabbage, sauerkraut, or kimchi, which I have already made a video about that you can find by clicking here, are precisely probiotic foods rich in microorganisms that repopulate your intestine. Vegetables, on the other hand, are prebiotics, that is, substances rich in fibers that nourish microorganisms. Today, it is recommended for a healthy person to reach at least 40 grams of fiber per day to reach at least the minimum health rate. Think that in rural nations like Uganda, they eat between 70 and 90 grams of fiber per day, while in the modern Western diet, the maximum is 10-15 grams, such a big difference that often explains why we are more stressed, have more intestinal problems, and suffer much more from tumors and degeneration of the central nervous system. Finally, the fifth type of food is not a food but water. There is a direct correlation, and studies show it, between dehydration and increased stress and increased cortisol. We never drink enough water, but probably the mistake is not not drinking water through a glass or bottle, but not drinking water through food. Because why, when you choose a dehydrated food or choose a processed food, it is precisely the processing that has led to the elimination of fibers that assimilate water, and therefore it is a dry food in itself. You understand it in fact because a freshly baked white bread, a white bread that you buy from the supermarket lasts one day because then it quickly becomes dry, or simply even crackers that are already dry in themselves. When instead you choose vegetables, fruits, legumes, cereals, you understand that you are not only eating, but you are also drinking, and it is the most effective, useful, and nutritious form of hydration. Are you stressed? Are you anxious? Do you want to lower your cortisol levels? The first thing to look at is what strategies you have used so far. Have you gotten used to hiding your negative emotions with food? To repressing difficult feelings by eating and stuffing yourself with high-calorie foods? If you see that this has been your habit and you are realizing that it has not brought benefits, perhaps it is time to change. The first step is to understand that negative emotions are part of life, and if you are interested in learning how to better manage your emotions, your thoughts, click here because there is a great video with perfect exercises to learn to have more self-control and to listen to yourself more. Once you have done this, favor instead those better foods. They will not be foods that immediately change your mood like those with which you normally stuffed yourself, but in the long term, you will feel calmer, more in control, healthier, and happier because they are the right foods for your health. Tell me what your experience has been, tell me if you too have suffered from difficulties with relationships with food, and let's try to understand together how to get out of these problems. We would like to know about your experience regarding the topic covered today. Share it with us in the comments and, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them. We will gladly respond.
Your like would be a source of satisfaction for us, and of course, do not forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming publications.